After hearing two interesting topics from our speakers, next topic will be brought by Mike Chan from Microsoft Hong Kong. Microsoft is our sponsor of Hong Kong Open Source Conference this year. Thank you for their support. Today's topic is speed up your analytics projects using Delta Lake on Asia. Delta Lake is an open source project that enables building a lake house architecture on top of existing storage systems such as ADLS and HDFS, plus full compatibility with Apache Spark API. Mike will cover the benefits and use cases of using Delta Lake on Azure. He is currently the Data and AI Cloud Solution Architect of Microsoft Hong Kong. Over to you, Mike. Hi, everyone. It's great to be here at Hong Kong Open Source Conference 2021. Uh, thanks for having me here today. My name is Mike Chan, and I'm going to talk about the topic on how do we speed up the analytics project by using Delta Lake on Azure. Let's get started. Just in case you wonder, I'm from the Microsoft Hong Kong team, uh, specifically uh, looking after our local partners. So I'm a cloud solution architect uh, in data and AI. Um, so that's why I'm going to talk about analytics project today with uh, on Delta Lake on, on Azure. So that's a lot of fun within this topic. Um, in today's agenda, firstly, I will do a brief introduction of myself. So talk about my history, why, uh, what kind of uh, data warehouse problem I have met uh, in the past, and why I think uh, the Delta Lake is one of the problem solver within those uh, data warehousing problem. And I'm going to explain a little bit about on the topic as well, because I, I assume uh, most of the Hong Kong open source community, actually they're more from um, developer background. So I don't want to assume you guys already know much about any text in, in data engineering, data scientists, etc. So I'm going to cover uh, what um, the data warehouse guys have been doing in the past. Uh, what analytics they have been doing, etc. And the second part is uh, why Delta Lake. Um, I'm going to explain uh, how a Delta Lake as a open source project, they already solve um, many problems within the data warehousing or analytics, pro analytics project. And then the third part is the extensibility. So um, I'm from Microsoft, so I'm going to explain a little bit about how our product cloud Azure they have some services that we we can work together with Delta Lake as open source project. So yeah, let's get started. Uh, the first thing is who am I? Uh, I'm Mike Chen. I have been working in data engineering and in text for nine years now, I think. Um, and then I have been working on some uh, different kind of. Uh, I I think it's fun. Uh, I work with streaming data in the past. I work with from major batch data processing like uh, everyday ETL in the past as well. And then I work one year dedicated on Spark cluster on top of Azure in, uh, before joining Microsoft as well. So um, this is the fun part. Uh, I'm going to explain what is any tech project, especially if you are from the developer background. So any project is like um, copying the data from your source system and then to a system that dedicate for uh, OLAP, so online chan, uh, analytics program. So um, in, the, in the past, like we have been doing it for decades, actually, uh, we uh, since Kimball in, yeah, come up with the, uh, the dimension modeling stuff, so NX project, we, we are talking about copying ingestion, data ingestion from different source system, um, LOB, CLM, graph DB, uh, images, etc. IoT data, obviously. So we are we try to copy the data from the source system to another system just to uh, just to find some insight within the data. So this is analytics project. Uh, simple, right? 
Um, you may have wondered in, uh, in the past why we are not doing some uh, more streaming stuff or event-driven architecture, which is uh, actually Leo the market. Uh, in the past dec uh, decades, I would say, uh, since the DSS, uh, Decision Support System, uh, we have been doing, what we have been doing is we copy from your source system to target system. The reason why we are doing that is uh, we are going to, from doing that, we can copy a uh, lot, uh, uh, lot up, uh, affecting the performance of your frontend system. So say for example, if I'm if I doing some dummy query on your on your frontend system, which uh, drain all your CPU of your e-commerce website, you wouldn't you wouldn't have you right. So so this applies the same as analytic system. So we isolate uh, in two different ways. Uh, so it wouldn't affect each one of another. We have something called ETL in the past. No, not in the past. It, it's still happening a lot in in uh in the world. So ETL stands for extract, transformation, and loading. Uh, so it's the, I think it's one on one of the data warehousing. So um, we have lots of tools uh to do that in from even uh, open source. We have tenant uh on different cloud vendor. You have different kind of products to do the ETL. So there are some variants called uh, ELT, which uh, is even more popular actually. So you just uh, extract the data from, say for example, e-commerce web page, and then load them to the data warehouse staging area, and then you transformation. So um, you, I assume you know what is ingest and store now. The third part is about data preparation and training. So before you you arrive on some fancy dashboard or reports on Power BI, so you have to pack a lot of data like data cleansing. Um, you test your ETL pipeline. Uh, you do a lot of modeling stuff just to ensure you have some uh, fine prediction model for the machine learning, right? So this is analytics project. Some uh, several components. So um. I'm not going to go through a lot of problem that I, I'm going to introduce to you later, uh, but it has been a problem that uh, ETL doesn't serve uh, much, especially uh, there's some call, uh, some of the work called time to insight, which explains, uh, say for example, ETL actually takes a long time for developer to just to make sure the data copying from one place to another uh, firstly, their performance, uh, the date latency of the data because data is freshness. So um, the third part is whether the, the reports is accurate or you want to change some parameter within your your uh, programming or model uh, to fit the data, right? Uh, but uh, it doesn't serve better in 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 the past, I would say, because. Uh, Below, no matter data warehousing or currently we are using some um, some ETL and X project, uh, we find the problem is the, the ingestion takes too long. Uh, we don't have much testing data available other than copying another set of data. And then uh, we don't have much uh, framework that you can bring up as a best practice from company A to another company. So usually different companies have different uh, ETL practice, I would say, in data engineering perspective. Um, so there's lots of um, uh, different variants on, on solving this problem. So that's why I love uh, Delta Lake collecting. So Delta Lake is uh, one of the uh, contribution from the Databricks company. They, they are finders of the Spark, which is the Hadoop uh, ecosystems uh, memory optimized uh, framework to data loading. I'm not sure I introduced too many jargon for you, but there's a lot to learn to, uh, in in this section. So it's for storage. So if you look at uh, the Delta Lake, actually it's a framework that you place it on top of your data lake so that you can have a more controlled environment for your testing, for your environment, for your transaction console, etc. So I'm going to uh, explain details in later section, but it brings a lot of optimization as well. 
so you can clean up the old file, have them compacted, and then you can do some compaction with optimization command. Um, small file problem, which has been troubling data warehouse guys or data lake guy uh, in the past few years, I would say. And then we have the seed ordering, reducing the amount of data that had to be read. Uh, with the big data, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm quite sure you heard of these terms in the, in the past few years. So there's a lot of new technology has been introduced in, in this area. We have the Hadoop, we have the Spark, we have Kadera. Um, so different, uh, so this can different uh, air, uh, perspective to solve the problem. But even when you purchase a data lake, uh, you will find that it's just like a, a storage server. It doesn't provide much control on how you use it. So data lake is the framework that you can uh, uh, implement in your data lake so that you can have a more controlled environment, more framework, what I'm expecting in, in the coming few years is that they are going to hire developer that have dealt like um, experience before to fill in their data engineering roles um, because it's, it's, it's designed for industrial standard, I would say. And then if you have similar experience, it's really uh, it could be really quick for you to pick up the ETL because it will be much similar to, to uh, compare with the past that every company company have their own practices. So uh, this is what I see as an advantage of that like. And then the third part, uh, I'm going to explain the topic, right? The topic is speed up any text project on, with uh, Delta Lake on Azure. So um, the last part is on Azure. Uh, Azure is a Microsoft public cloud offering. Uh, with not just a public cloud, you can use it with confidential computing and also you, we have some hybrid offering for, ET, uh, for the uh, IoT um, use case and also you can use some of our, our component in your own data center as well. So I'm not go, going to cover the north because it's the Azure has lots of offering that I can, I can talk about. But uh, we have databases, we have uh, Synapse, we have uh, Azure Databricks, which is, I think, one of the major topics today. So uh, it's a proper car, yeah. So we have a reliable infrastructure for you to work on. Um, just to mention that we have 61 regions, which I believe the, is the most in public cloud uh, vendor offering. And then for the open source community, we have to co-locate co the support with, uh, with Red Hat. We have been using lots of, uh, I think more than half of our server actually is, is on Linux. Um, may, you may think of Microsoft only selling Windows. No, we are no longer that way to, of thinking. And then uh, just to mention that we have a new uh, full pin uh, on the environment promise Promise as well, so uh, we are going to reduce your carbon footprint just in case you are selecting uh, your uh, your public car vendor. But it's not the the major focus today. Today's major focus is how do we apply the data lake on top of data lake. So what is a data lake? So um, I'm going to show you what is one of my major data lake. Just a second, so. Just in case you wonder, this is to put um, the user interface of Azure storage. Uh, think of it of your just like OneDrive for you, but but optimized for for enterprise use case. So you can see that we have um, I have a data lake actually create. So if you look at he here, we have the ADLS Gen two. So ADLS stands for Azure Data Lake Services. So Gen two is our latest generation. And then if you open the container within, you will find I have several containers. I'm going to cover Delta Lake uh, um, container today. So you can see that I have a different folder and that's it. This is one, uh, this is a typical data, uh, data Lake deployment. So it's simple, right? It's just like a your file explorer or Google Drive or S3 and etc. It looks like the same to be honest, uh, especially is for storage. But this is the beauty of um, how do we deal with data these days. 
So if we go back to what is a uh, data like, we, um, we want to store the data in its lateral format. And then it's generally blocks of files. A data like is um, all of the data expatriate war copies. I'm going to explain why I uh, we're doing that. And then um, I'm not going to explain this one. You you have to with it yourself. Uh, today's focus is data like. So it's not the data warehouse. Uh, in the past, we don't have data like. So that we have a lot of problem as well. <laughs> So in the past, when I work with some typical data warehouse offering, like I'm not going to name that, maybe SQL Server, take SQL Server as an example. We only have schema on write. So which means that we have ETL, right? You have to confine the schema just before loading it, loading your data to the data warehouse, which takes a lot of time. And then your front end, you have, you have lots of changes in your front end, right? we are difficult to pick up. So we as a ETL developer find it um, challenging to catch up with your own schema improvement. So in, in my experience, uh, I work in some small company as well in, in the past. I have to tell the front end, uh, the source system uh, developer, hey, if you are applying some uh, schema changes, you have to give me a DDL file uh, so that I can apply on data warehouse just before you deploy your solution, your, your patches. It never happens. Um, they, they don't have a confined in, uh, structure, um, especially for small company. I think big, big corporation, they have more fine control on this one, but most likely you don't have a, a, a accurate uh, schema file in, in, in the past for you to to uh, place it on the data warehouse just before they apply the changes. It, it just doesn't happen. So that's why uh, one of the uh, advantage of data lag is you have schema on wait. So that you, no matter how your front end is going to change, just copy the data over or just stream the data over, we can deal with it, your schema later. So this is innovation, I would say because we don't have to wait for, or we don't have to endure, um, endure how the so, uh, front end is going to change. Uh, I shouldn't use the word front end, I just use the uh, transaction system, yeah. So uh, your transaction system, your web app, whatever your uh, schema changes you apply, we can view it later and in the data warehouse. So in the data lake. So it answers a lot of problem of tomorrow and then it scale uh, without limits. It happens a lot in data warehouse, you want to run out of this space uh, because people copying data around, copying the table just before the changes. And then you, because it's database, right? And under lane, so you have to manage the memory, etc. So compared with that, data lake has the advantage is on, um, storage is object, you can hold any type of data. So this is uh, why data lake is po so popular today with, uh, in data analytics project. And then the second part is, um, does it equal to data lake storage? Um, the answer is no. Hey, Mike, you just said you have a product called Azure data lake storage, and you mentioned you want to apply a data lake. What is the differences? So it's a logical concept. So with, when you are deploying actually an enterprise data like you, uh, you want to implement in a more um, controlled way who has the access, uh, which folder uh, storing which data, how do you manage metadata, and then uh, etc. You, you can think of the enterprise agreement uh, requirement, right? Um, and, and yeah, so our products is only our offering and storage lot the framework of loading data. So this is how we define uh, what, what is ADLS and da data lake uh, as, a, as a concept. Yeah. So that's how data, uh, data lake jump in. It brings performance and reliability of the data. So uh, talk about the problem is uh, the enterprise in the past, they have to spend a lot of dollar just get the data into the data lake 
you have the text stream, you have the video, you have the email uh, on your data lake, but Eleva uh, use proof them useful to the data, data scientist or machine learning developer because it's failing because of those unreliable data. So by unreliable, maybe your DTL interrupt the last night, maybe your data quality is um, not, not so good, etc, etc. So why we are struggling? It could be just like a failed production job, so live data in corruption state. It happens a lot. So in the past, uh, when I, even when I'm dealing with an open source uh, Spark and then I can develop some jobs, if you doesn't have a lot of uh, error handling, your data could be in the midway of transformation. So when your user look at your uh, corrupted data in, in the next morning, they will have a wrong consumption, uh, conclusion, right? Because it's just garbage in, garbage out. If you don't offer them the good data, so they don't have a, a good insight to be offered. And then the second thing is the schema enforcement. So when you copy in data over, you have the low quality of data and then you have the inconsistency. Uh, it could happen from your raw data to your transform, transform data as well. The third part is uh, you don't have much uh, consistency. So say for example, when you uh, um, developer A or ETL developer A and B, they can have different style. In, in my past, one of the major challenges is I don't want to read another guy's um, code because the, the ETL style is quite different to my own and it's actually vice versa. He doesn't want to read my code as well. So it doesn't scale much in the consistency. We don't write the code or write the detail methodology consistently. Even I, I think yeah, we have some control already, but it just doesn't work out. So this is one of the um, I think data reliability challenge with data like. And then second part is the performance. Um, so we have uh, small file problems. Uh, I met in the, in the past as well. So we have a lot of uh, small files that only a data lake can, can, can write it because uh, Hadoop works this way, you, you can read the white paper. And then you have the partition, you have low caching as well. So we need the data lake engine to join and then fix the problem for us. So data lake is a new standard for building data lake. I generally believe in that. Uh, we have an open format based on parquet, so, so optimizedly uh, complex to file format. We have the transaction control ACID. So you don't have to worry about, uh, no longer worry about the, the interrupted ETL or transformation. It's just one or zero when your transformation is done or in the original um, status. And then we have the Apache Spark API controls, well, um, uh, compatibility as well. So you work with your API. And then if you look at the modern data warehouse, uh, the first part still we are ingesting the, the data from your sys source system. And then you can see that it's in the raw format. And then the, the first part actually we call it branch table is the raw delta format. So you can store your data, uh, especially it's for streaming and, and batches. You can uh, save the data as a delta table. We call it brands because it's ready to be um, uh, data preparation. And then the second part, we use the Azure data bricks to join in to enrich your data, to clean your data, get them ready for some uh, serious calculation. So you can develop those models ready, ready for the user, etc. in the enriched silver table, silver layer as well. The third part is about the goal table. So goal table is the place that your user is going to interact with data. So this is how we um, how Delta Lake is defining those data in, in the storage layer that you can have three different um, uh, directory store data and then get them ready for the user. So it's confined that um, if you go to different companies, if they have Delta Lake, it should be the look the same. So it's a framework that every, um, I think every ETL development uh, should follow actually. And then you load the data in the surfing layer, you have Synapse, 
you have Cosmo, etc. So I'm going to talk about uh, Azure Synapse later uh, as well. So uh, to in the problem solving uh, perspective, it makes the data ready for analytics by isolating in uh, three different layers. And then we have the uh, data scientists and machine learning pick up the data at the goal table. So um, it's going to features ACID and schema, etc. time travel, uh, etc. So uh, what is the differences if you're placing a parquet file compared with the, uh, with the Delta Lake format? So if you're doing it in Delta Lake, one of your uh, biggest findings, I would say, is that you have more metadata you will find in your own uh, data lake. So say for example, if you have the data snapshot enabled, um, you can go back to a different uh, timestamp of the data. Why they can do it is they actually uh, implement the transaction log within those directory. So, um, so they can work out which timestamp they perform what kind of changes. So when you are doing a rollback of the data or like you want to view the older version of the data, you can just select your past timestamp and then they will get back the data on you with the help of transaction log. So it, it works much like a database, but in a file format. Um, the breakthrough here is the cost. Um, database, they have a lot of control, they have a lot of um, memory optimization they are not file format right they never will uh, they're not so uh that's why it costs much uh it's cause the cost is higher when you're placing data on the database but by doing this way in a delta like uh, you have low low cost for storage you you can ensure that you can find some ins uh, i mean you don't have to invest a lot to to find out whether the data have some inside within. So uh, this is why uh, we have the time travel and then you have the ACID transaction. The outcome actually is high quality and reliable data that ready for analytics. And then you have the date breaks optimization engine is um, uh, Apache Spark, etc. Um, I, can, I can't go through the uh, performance status. But uh, let's take a look on how do we use the Spark API on, on the Delta. As you can see, you just create a table using Parquet with the, um, you just using the Delta. So this is how you create a table with a Delta format. So once you do that, you, uh, it's enabled for you the time travel, the, the ACID transaction control, etc. So you can also convert your existing packet, packet table to Delta as well, optimize the layout, etc. So um, the third part is Figon, uh, Figon updates. Just as I mentioned, I want, to, I'm, I want all my data team members, they have the same methodology for upshotting or merging the data. So if they are following the same uh, standard, the ETL troubleshooting will be much easier than, than the past. So we also have the data versioning of the time travel. As you can see here, you can reproduce some of the experiments. Um, we can have some options, etc. So especially um, this one, timestamp as of. So you can also go back to a, an earlier timestamp to read the data within that version. So this is how Data Lake is going to help you troubleshooting, QA, etc. So we have different use cases. I'm not going through the details today. Um, uh, also, what is uh, Azure Data Breaks? I assume you you would have heard of what what is uh, Apache Spark. Um, just to mention that um, because we are the Series A investor, if I remember correctly, so we have been investing in Data Breaks at the early stage. Uh, so we we are keep on having a a really really good. Um, relationship with uh, Databricks as a company. Uh, they are our first part uh, product on Azure Data uh, Marketplace. So you can find, uh, say for example, Python Engine is first launched on, on the Azure platform as well. So uh, not just uh, Azure Databricks work with Data Lake. 
So say for example on data factory, it, you can find that you can use the delta lake format in our ETL uh, tools, which is uh, Azure Data Factory. So we already support uh, delta lake as inch, uh, as extract and loading target for uh, yeah for the data factory. And then the second point is uh, the fastest uh, query engine of Databricks, which uh, Planton. Uh, engine their first could launch with Azure. I think it's launched on other cloud platform now, uh, but on Impview, etc. So um, I think one year earlier we already have the same engine available on Azure because we have been investing a lot on Databricks. And yeah, we have the uh, we also have the Azure Synapse State Warehouse. That, uh, we have a new uh, capabilities called uh, Serverless. SQL that you can queue with the Delta Lake format as well. So not just Azure Databricks. And that's all my section today. I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions, please feel free to drop them in the chat room. Again, thank you. And enjoy the remaining talks in Hong Kong Open Source Conference this year. Bye bye.